thing you want to do. Honey, honey, it's okay. It's okay. Sweetie, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Hi. Hi. It's okay. Yeah. Wow, you're just having a really bad dream. It's all right. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, darling. What is going on with you? No, 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 I wasn't asleep. You didn't wake me, honey. And even if you did, I don't care. Oh, come on, why don't you sit up, honey? Come on. That's it. Sit up a bit. No, no, don't slide back down. Sit up, talk to me. Okay, that's it. Yes, okay. Let me cover you a bit, okay? Now tell me, what's going on? You haven't had a nightmare like that since you were little. Babe, I promise you, I was not, look, I was putting on my press-on nails for the first time. You know, they're not bad, and they're quite strong. <laughs> At least I made you smile. Now, you want to talk about the dream? Not really? Okay, 100% okay. But do you want to talk at all? You do? Okay. Let me get you a couple of things, and... Then we'll be fine, okay? Let me just get some things to make you feel better, okay? Just one sec. Okay. Here we go. Here you go. Yeah. How about something to drink? I just made myself an herbal tea. Haven't even taken a sip, so why don't you have some? That's it. And some more? Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna put it over here for now, okay? Now, why don't you tell your Auntie Angel exactly what's been going on? I know some things have been bothering me lately. What do you mean it's embarrassing? Honey, I'm much older than you. Anything you've been through or you're going through, if I don't know someone who's been through it, I've been through it. <laughs> Tell me what's going on. Okay, take the smallest. I know. Let's take the most embarrassing. That's always fun. Your period. Okay, well, what's wrong with that? Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I did once hear someone say that cramps should be uncomfortable, never painful. As a bunch of crap. Every person I ever knew who had cramps has said they're painful. Okay. There are things you can do. Um, you can vo avoid salt and caffeine just before. Um, hot baths seem to help some people. A hot water bottle can sometimes help. Um, I like, I personally would take Tylenol when it happened to me. Um, be careful of taking things like Advil. Um, they're actually blood thinners. So, yeah, they can help with the cramps, but you could also get some flooding, which, when you're not expecting it, not a good thing. You can always talk to me about stuff like this. Oh, please, we have to normalize our body functions, you know? And people who menstruate have cramps. We have bloating. I have a friend who literally has a wardrobe for one week a month because she bloats so badly because she goes up a size. It happens to everybody, sweetie. For sure, it's nothing. And you should be able to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And it's okay. I personally tried never to let it stop me from doing things. Um, but I also knew my limit. And if I couldn't do something, I just said no. It's that simple. Yes, there's a big difference between pushing yourself to do something you can't and pushing yourself to do something you can. And only you know that. Okay. Sure. Now, do you want me to get you some Tylenol? Oh, maybe after? Okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay, yeah, all right. Okay, so that you're okay with that now? Great. Let's talk about what else is bothering me. Let me just get comfortable. <laughs> what else has been giving you nightmares? 
yeah, it is the almost the end of summer and yeah, your work, your summer job is going to be over and back to school. It is scary, especially you're going into your last year of high school and you have to be thinking about your first year of university. Those are a lot of big changes, honey. It's normal. You are not the only person that feels this way. It's perfectly normal, okay? It's absolutely normal, honey. Of course, here. Yes. Do you want me to get you a cool cloth? Yeah. Maybe later? Okay. And I like, let me just brush your hair away, sweetie. I like putting it behind my neck rather than on my forehead. Yeah. Okay, well, let's think about going back to school. Um, do you have everything ready? Do you have all the supplies that you need? Do we need to go shopping? <laughs> you have the supplies. Okay. What about um, clothes? Oh, that's right. You are a uniform. Okay. But uh, does everything fit? Have you gone up or down your size? Okay. You're afraid you've gone up a size. Okay. So let's just go get new stuff. All right. Yes. It's okay, honey. There is no point making yourself miserable or wearing something that's uncomfortable. You know, that's why I always say, start with your undergarments and make sure they feel good. Then your shoes, then your clothes. As long as they're comfortable, you'll feel comfortable. <laughs> okay, well, you know, not everybody has a lot of friends in high school. And that's okay, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. Sometimes you don't find your clique until university or till you're working. I honestly don't feel like I hit who I was supposed to be until I was in my 30s, okay? It's okay. Not everybody has big groups. And some of those girls that have the big groups that you're talking about and the guys, they go home feeling just as insecure as you do. Yes, they do. It happens. Yep, it does. I promise it's okay. Now, what about it? We're, oh, you like working. Okay. You like having your own money. Well, have you talked to your parents about getting a part-time job? Okay. Well, you know what? Maybe you can't get one from September to December, but maybe when you show them that your grades are good, that you can handle the pressure. That's the biggest thing, sweetie. Why put more pressure on yourself if you don't have to? Okay. If you're just working so that you have some spending money, just show them that you can do it and maybe try to get just a weekend job. Yeah, I'll back you up for sure. I will. You know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is something else bothering you? You don't know what it is. Okay. Just fear of the unknown. Yeah, honey, that can happen to all of us. Yes. And Angel knows. She knows. I have fear of the unknown too. Mm -hmm. I have a fear of being left out, of um, reaching my peak and everything's downhill. <laughs> that happens to everybody at every stage in life. Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh at you, honey. Oh, my nose is itchy. My allergies are bad today. Okay, that's called imposter syndrome. When you are afraid that um, everyone thinks you're good at something, but you're really not, and they're gonna find out. Everybody goes through that. It's perfectly normal to have imposter syndrome. It, um, it's when we don't have enough self-confidence in ourselves. okay? Have you been working on some of those mantras I gave you? I am enough, I am important, I have skills, I have quality. That's what's going to help you to feel better. Yeah. My poor baby. Do you want me to help you get back to sleep? Yeah? What would help you go back to sleep? Face brushing. You got it. Let me go get them. brought this 
silicone one that you like so much. You know this is to apply facials, right? I know, but you like the way it feels. A little edge? You want me to trace you? Okay. I can do that for you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And you know, there is um, a technique about going into your dream and changing the ending because it's your dream whether it's your subconscious talking to you or not it's entirely your dream and you don't have to go back to sleep to do it think about I know everyone tells you just let it go forget think about the dream and change the ending make yourself in control Make yourself in charge of the ending. Yep. Of course I'm going to help you go back to sleep. Yes. When you were little and you'd have a bad dream, I'd always... You always wanted your face brushed. And you like me to play with your hair and get it out of your face. Yes, I can do that. I'll take it this side. Yeah, I know you used to go in the tub and we'd wash away the bad dream. I think you're a little old for that now. Mm -hmm. You want me to read to you? Oh, you want me to tell you an anti angel story? Okay. All right, you close your eyes and lay back, and I will tell you an anti angel story. So, once upon a time, very long time ago, there was a magical kingdom. And in this kingdom lay a dragon. And everyone was afraid of the dragon. And the dragon was too big to belong in, the ho in anyone's house or castle. It ate too much food for any one family to feed it. So the poor dragon had to live in a cave. And it, it was very sad because it had no one to talk to. It had no one to play with. And one day, a big flood came to the village and it wiped out the main bridge. And it was the bridge that connected the village to the food source, to where all of the food was. And the, the people didn't know what they were going to do. And they tried building a boat, but the flood had taken away the, the logs. They tried swimming across, but people nearly drowned. And finally, one, one little one decided they would swim and save everyone. And about halfway across, they stopped. And it looked like they would surely drown. And they were hollering for help. And the townspeople on the side of the, the bank were crying and yelling because they, the little one was going to be lost. And all they were trying to do was help people. And suddenly the sky darkened. And people thought another flood was coming. But instead it was the dragon. The dragon had flown and blocked out the sun. And it flew over the villagers into the water and it lifted the little one up and scooped it onto his back and it flew them back to safety and the villagers were so happy and the dragon shyly asked why everyone was so upset and they said well the bridges out we're never going to be able to get back to the food before we can build another bridge and the dragon looked across and he said, you know, I could put my tail on this side and my front legs on the side where the food is. And you guys could climb on my back and walk across. And as long as too many of you didn't go at once, it would be fine. And they said, you would do that for us, but we turned you away. And he said, I would do anything. You're my people, whether you accept me or not. 
So they realized that they had perhaps judged too harshly and maybe didn't really think things out. And yes, one family could not feed the dragon for long, but if everybody took a turn, they'd be fine. And perhaps they could start building the village closer to the cave so that they could keep the dragon company. Because if the dragon was willing to do this for them, so the dragon stretched his mighty tail and dug it into the beach and flew across very low to the water and put his front feet right on the other side, barely reaching, but he kept up that stretch for as long as he could. And the townspeople went very quickly over, that's right, I know you like when I do that to your tummy, don't you? Over the dragon until they got to the other side. And they got the food that they needed and they quickly hurried back. And this went on for about a month. Um, they, they set a time and the dragon would come and they would do this while the other people were building the bridge. And the dragon was able to help. And this bridge was so solid because the dragon used their mighty fiery breath to solder all of the iron nails in. This one would never break. And then they gathered up all the metal in the town that they could find that wasn't useful and they placed it on the bridge and then the dragon melted it so it melted onto the wood and that made it super super secure this bridge was never coming down no matter how many floods happened so Pretty soon, they built more homes nearer and nearer to the cave, and they started to bring the dragon little gifts. Some trees, some food. They built a lovely pool. Now, the townspeople could swim in it, but for the dragon, it was a lovely little wading pool. And he had so much fun with the villagers playing in the water and talking to them. And soon he asked them if they would like, if anyone would like to go for a ride on his back. Now, some of the villagers were afraid. So they asked the dragon if they could build um, a very comfortable saddle so that the townspeople would feel secure while they rode. The dragon thought that was lovely. The only thing he asked is that it be in his favorite color. Well, favorite colors, pink and purple, those were his they thought that was a lovely idea. So while the dragon was flying some of the townspeople around, the other townspeople hurried to the cave and they painted the entrance of the cave pinks and purples so that it looked like a pink and purple sun was coming out of the cave. When the dragon got back, he was so touched by their generosity and the townspeople and the dragon lived for many, many, many generations, all loving each other and accepting each other for who they are. The end. Did that help? Yeah. You ready to let go of the bad dream? Try to get some sleep? Yeah. Okay, let me tuck you in. Cover up. <laughs> Lift your chin. There we go. There you go. Okay. You try to get some sleep, but if you need me, you call, okay? And remember, I love you. I value you. I honor you. I am so, so very glad that you were born, my darling.